I've mentioned output styles a couple of times now. An output style or a bibliographic style is what determines how a reference will look in a bibliography. And there are a number of different ones that are available. The one that you can see on my screen at the moment, APA 7th, is an author date style with a hanging indent. The title of the journal is italicized and so forth. If we were told that we needed to use a numbered style, such as here, you can see the same information is presented in a very different format. So it's author, then title of article italicized, the journal name is not italicized, the volume is bolded but not in brackets, and so the changes go on. We can also see that if I was to choose Vancouver style, it's a numbered style and it looks different again. All of this is the same basic information. It's the same reference, but it's being presented in different ways. Now your bibliographic style is often dictated by your lecture notes or by a conversation with a supervisor in the case of a PhD for what is generally acceptable within your field, or it's dictated by the publishing requirements of a conference or a journal that you wish to publish with. So you need to find out what your preferred style is for each of your projects. EndNote includes about 500 styles that are very popular and the, at least 10 of them are available from your drop down menu on your screen at any time, as you saw me flipping between them. I have a couple of extras included because I troubleshoot for people, but you can see that there's a number of things here. There's Vancouver, there's APA 7th, there's Chicago 16th footnote, and a range of others. Activating a star within EndNote is as easy as clicking to see if it's available on your little drop down list. And if it's not available there, you click select another style. This pops up a little window that shows you the 500 or so that are already included with EndNote. Uh, hopefully you know the name of the style. So for example, if I want to find IEEE, I can just type in IEEE pretty quickly and it jumps me through the alphabetic list by name. I can find the one that I want, perhaps it's IEEE Proceedings, and choose. And what that does is it makes that style active in EndNote and shows me how that item would look if I was to cite it in the IEEE Proceedings requirement. Occasionally we find that a style is not available within the popular styles of EndNote's included 500. And if that's the case, then you need to find it and save it to a particular place so that EndNote can use it. This is typical of uh, journal article styles and occasional personal styles. We have a Swinburne Harvard style, for example, that some of our departments like to use. What we need to do is have a look at where those files need to be saved so that EndNote can find them. If we click our Edit drop-down menu, we can see our preferences. And in our preferences, we can find our option for our styles under folder locations. It's really important to select the folder and make sure that that's where we add our extra styles. So you can see here that EndNote is going to be looking on my C drive in my general documents for a folder called EndNote and then styles. We have to create that in our file management system in order to make sure that EndNote can find our added styles. So what we'll just do is say cancel and I'll call up my file manager. So here is my file manager. I'm going to open up this PC and click on the C drive. And what EndNote wants is for me to put it within the documents. So I have to go to users and my name and documents and I have created a folder here on EndNote and then within EndNote styles. And that's where I'll have to bring in anything that I 
do not already have available from EndNote. What we will basically do is go to C and Users. If anyone else uses your computer, find your particular um, folder and then Documents. And within Documents, you will click with your right mouse button and do New Folder and call it EndNote. Double click it and it'll be in here, New Folder and Create Styles. And that's where you'll put your styles from now on. Once something is living in the Styles folder, you will be able to call it up under Select Another Style and just look it up in your alphabetic listing. Once you've picked your style, we can talk about creating those bibliographies. A simple bibliography is where we say, let's say we're going to write a paper on stormwater drainage. So I'll go into my groups and I'll create a group and I'll call it stormwater drainage. This is for an individual paper, it doesn't need a special group set, but it currently has no content. I need to go to my all references and look for my articles for stormwater drainage. And EndNote has looked through all of my references and found 27 items that match. So if I click on these particular items, I can have a look at each of them and decide which ones are relevant. I can either click the item and say groups, add references to stormwater drainage, or I can actually click that item and just pull it across holding down my left mouse button. Let me just grab a few items to demonstrate how I could create a simple bibliography. I'll click my group, Stormwater Drainage, and click one of the records just to remove the previous selections. I'm going to produce a bibliography in APA 7th. And what I can do is I can either hold down my control key and select individual items or I can do control A which selects them all. And after I've done that I can click copy citation over here on the site. Now EndNote is cleverly rearranging these citations to match the requirements of APA 7th and has put it in the clipboard. If I swap to my Word document, I can then paste that bibliography in and it comes in matching the rules of APA 7th. Now I can see here that the title of my item, my research piece here, is in the wrong format. So we don't want all capitals as part of our title. I can actually come up here and I can change it to capitalize each word or actually what uh, APA 7th requires is sentence case where only the first word of the title of the article and any personal names or company names or proper nouns are going to be capitalized. When I change this in my Word document it is not connected to EndNote in any way and therefore I would actually be quite smart to copy this rechanged um, capitalization here and copy it and take it across to EndNote and fix that article for future use. So if I go across to my library and edit and save the change. I won't have to worry about that again in the future. Going back to my Word document, I can see that the APA style is being met. It's hanging indent. It's included in the digital object identifier. It's italicizing the title and so forth. Now, if I realized looking through my subject uh, guide that actually I was meant to do Vancouver style, instead what I might do is go back to EndNote and back to my summary screen, 
I would change my style and I'd look and realize this isn't going to work terribly well because Vancouver is a numbered style. So the references should appear in the order that they are referenced throughout the document. So I would need to go back to my, in my article and I would need to keep track of which order they appeared in, but I could produce a per correctly formatted bibliography. So I select them all, copy citation, go to my Word document and paste it in. And it would be up to me to shuffle this order according to how they occur in the document. Doing a simple bibliography for the EndNote this way does create a very nicely formatted bibliography for you, but you need to go and do your in-text referencing without using EndNote. So you would need to know for the APA 7th style how to do your in-text references to match your bibliography. In terms of your numbered style here for Vancouver, you would need to check your style guide to see how the numbers should be inserted in the documentation, if they're supposed to be in rounded brackets, square brackets, superscript, subscript, whatever it might be. So if you're going to use our simple bibliography method, you still must know your style and you will need to do your in-text referencing by yourself. EndNote can't do that for you using this process. If you want EndNote to do your in-text referencing and your bibliography, then we need to talk about a process called Cite While You Write, which is where EndNote can do that for you, but you need to know the whens and when nots of this process. And we'll talk about this in the next segment.